Hey guys and welcome, and today we're going to go over the antibiotic class macrolides. Macrolides are either bacteriostatic or bactericidal. Static meaning that they suppress bacterial growth or cidal meaning that they kill the bacterial growth. With macrolides, this is achieved at high concentrations. Macrolides are four drugs, azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin and erythromycin. As you can see, they're all in thromycin. This is a very easy way to remember these drugs because they all have the same ending, thromycin. Macrolides mechanism of action focus on inhibiting protein synthesis by binding on ribosomes, thus preventing the production of bacterial protein, which is essential for bacterial growth. Don't get caught up in the semantics and the science. Just remember that it inhibits protein synthesis, which is crucial for bacterial growth and development. Macrolides are indicated for all types of infections, respiratory tract, skin and soft tissue, streptococcus, but I want you to focus on the last two. Lyme disease is a very big one for the macrolides antibiotics. And then STIs, which is sexually transmitted infections. This drug class is commonly prescribed for these particular diseases, so make sure that you know them. Macrolides contraindications include obviously any sort of allergies your patients might have, but with these antibiotics, you must also assess your patient for any pre-existing conditions or concerns because of the adverse effects, which we'll cover a little later. If your patient has GI dysfunction, cardiac dysfunction, hearing impairment or dysfunction, or liver disease, this antibiotic is not going to be ideal for them because it might potentially exacerbate their condition. Macrolides also can potentiate the effects of digoxin and warfarin. Let's say your patient comes in, you know, taking erythromycin and warfarin at the same time, and they have an INR of 10, and they're spontaneously bleeding. That is because the macrolide increased the effects of the warfarin. So again, macrolides increase and even can cause toxicity with patients who are taking digoxin or warfarin. So you must know that as well. Macrolides are, again, antibiotics that work wonderfully but have a lot of adverse effects. We must monitor for drug toxicity in the form of blood work. Your patient's going to get blood work to make sure that their liver and, you know, their cardiac systems are not being hit in an adverse way by these antibiotics. Macrolide adverse effects. Uh, let's start with the integumentary group. We have thrombophlebitis. We have urticaria, we have rash, we have pleuritis. These are all things that are involved with the skin reactions of patients taking the antibiotics. A really great way to remember the integumentary reactions is TURP, T-U-R-P, and it's the beginning of each one of these. Adverse effects of the gastrointestinal are plentiful. We have nausea and vomiting. We have diarrhea. We have liver dysfunction. We have heartburn. We have gastric issues, flatulence, you know, gallbladder problems, jaundice, anorexia. Again, as you can see, if your patient has a history of gastric dysfunction, this drug is going to exacerbate that already pre-existing condition. All right, let's move on to the central nervous system side effects. We have headache, dizziness, vertigo, and somnolence. If you have a patient that suffers from migraines or vertigo already, this is going to exacerbate that already, again, pre-existing condition profile. An easy way to remember this is HDVS. Again, I took the beginning letters of each symptom just to help you understand the adverse effects that take place with these antibiotics macrolides. Last but not least, we have cardiovascular and other. We have palpitations, chest pain, bradycardia or tachycardia, ringing in the ears or hearing loss. Again, if you have a patient that has severe cardiac dysfunction or they already have baseline bradycardia, macrolides might exacerbate that condition. So you must make sure that this drug is going to be safe for your patients and you must know the extensive adverse profile for these drugs. Priority nursing concepts for a patient receiving macrolides includes pharmacology and infection control. 
All right, let's go over our key points. Again, it is bacteriostatic or bactericidal. Again, it's either going to suppress growth or kill bacteria in general. Uh, macrolides all end in <laughs> thermicin. Again, an easy way to remember that. Uh, the in the infections are across the board. Again, I want you to remember Lyme disease and STIs such as syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea are big ones. With this drug, you're going to monitor in the form of blood work because, again, we have to monitor and make sure that we're not, you know, causing toxicity in the liver or the cardiac. And again, this is a really, really big one with this class. You must understand that you're going to have skin reactions like rash and hives. You're going to have GI issues issues like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, jaundice. With the central nervous system, your patient might complain of headaches or vertigo. Uh, cardiovascular complaints include palpitations or chest pain. And last but not least, you, your patient might complain of hearing issues such as ringing of the ears or hearing loss. Again, proper assessment and monitoring are crucial for a patient who are on macrolides. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.